In this tutorial, we're going to practice using conditional and logical operators, and we're going to divide a list of mesh vertices. We're going to begin by referencing NURB surface from Rhino to Grasshopper. We're going to convert this NURB surface into a mesh surface. We're going to deconstruct the mesh to extract its vertices. Then we're going to deconstruct vertices to extract coordinates. And finally, we're going to divide this list of vertices based on their Z coordinate. If you haven't seen the previous exercise called Color Mesh Geometry, I'm going to leave the link in the description below and I advise you to watch that video before continuing with this one. You can use any type of NURB surface for this exercise. Here, I'm going to quickly show how to create one from four corner points. So first, we create four corner points and that's the surface the on plane then we select the surface and in the command prompt I'm going to type in rebuild and click enter so we are selecting to rebuild the surface and here we can add uh, additional um, control points if we'd like to after rebuilding the surface you might need to turn uh, control point preview on so that you're able to see surface control points select and modify them you can select multiple groups by holding shift key and deselect by holding control key. So I'm molding this preform NURB surface into place using control points and the gumbo. And when we are done with the modeling, it's time to reference this NURB surface from Rhino into Grasshopper. So let's go to the Grasshopper component palettes under params, geometry, and let's pick surface container. Let's right click on it and choose set one surface and pick the surface from Rhino viewport. The preview is overlapping, so I'm going to select the surface in Rhino and type in the command prompt hide and click enter. So we are hiding this specific object in Rhino preview. Our next step is to convert the SNURP surface into a mesh. There are several different ways to do that, but in this tutorial, we're going to go under Mesh Utilities and choose Mesh Surface Component. This component gives us some control over mesh topology. It requires initial NURB surface as an input and U and V values to divide this surface using a grid. And the last two input parameters are optional. We're going to talk about these two a bit later. Let's connect our surface geometry to the surface input and you can see that the component is already working with the default settings. To define U and V values, we're going to use number sliders. So let's double click on canvas and let's set the bounds. Let's say from 5 to 30, click enter. I'm going to make a copy of this slider and let's connect to the U and V inputs to the mesh surface component. As I am manipulating these U and V subdivision sliders, you can see in Rhino viewport that I am changing the topology of this mesh, specifically the proportions of subdivision and the resolution or face count. Let's move on and talk about the overhang input. This input is relevant when working with trimmed surfaces. So currently in our case, this is not a trimmed surface and just to uh, explain this input to you. I'm going to quickly trim the surface. So let's see how the mesh surface component is going to solve this trimmed boundary. Notice how mesh faces overhang the curve that I've used for trimming the surface. And if we go under params, input and grab boolean toggle, we can switch this option to false. And again, you can see how now mesh faces uh, lie inside the boundary of the curve. Let's now talk about the final input option, which is equalize. I'm going to hold Control Shift to, to reconnect this Boolean toggle to the equalize input and uh, go to your Rhino top viewport. So we see top view. So you could imagine that the way this mesh is currently being constructed is by projecting a UV grid onto a surface based on Rhino world C play. If we switch the equalize input option to true, notice how now this UV grid is reacting to the surface curvature. This means that it's trying to equalize the lengths of mesh face edges. This option does not guarantee that mesh edges will be equal in length, but they're going to be more similar compared to the equalize option set to false. 
Okay, so let's move on. I'm going to turn off the preview for the web geometry and I'm also going to turn on the grid preview in Rhino viewport. We are now ready for the next step, which is to deconstruct this mesh surface. So let's go to the component palettes under mesh analysis and choose the deconstruct mesh component. And let's connect mesh surface output to the mesh input. We have successfully deconstructed the mesh and extracted its vertices as well as some additional information. If you don't have the same preview as I do, you can go to the grasshopper main menu bar under display and choose to change preview point flavor and also turn on preview mesh edges. I'm also going to go under params utilities and grab param viewer so we could read the vertex output data tree structure and it says that it's a single branch data tree or a list. We have to continue data deconstruction here and this time we need to deconstruct vertices so we're going to go under vector point and choose deconstruct point component. I'm going to group the first part of the definition. And so now we have deconstructed the vertices or points into their coordinates. And from now we're going to focus on Z coordinate of these points. And we're going to evaluate uh, these values, Z values, using conditional operators. Let's do that. Let's go under math operators and choose smaller than. So I'm going to begin by choosing the points that have the lowest Z value. Let's connect the Z into A input and for the B input we need the number to compare Z values to. In my case, I don't know what sort of number this should be. I need to know the limits of Z coordinates in this case. So for that I'm gonna go under math domain and choose bounce. I'm gonna connect Z coordinates to bounce and I'm also gonna grab a panel to read the output. In my case, the bounds are somewhere between 5 and 19. So I'm going to use a number slider with similar range. So let's say somewhere from 5.5 to 19.5. And let's connect to the B input in the smaller than component. I'm also going to grab a, a panel to read the output. And I'm going to set the second number to, let's say, 9. So the conditions for filtering are now all set. We have generated the Boolean pattern. The next step is to go under sets, sequence and grab co-pattern component to actually filter the vertices according to this Boolean pattern. In order to see filtered vertices in Rhino viewport, I need to turn off the preview of mesh surface and deconstruct mesh components. So the points or vertices now visible in Rhino viewport are the ones that have Z value lower than number 9. I also want to assign custom preview color for these points. So I'm going to go under display preview and choose custom preview component and then use color swatch to pick custom color. Now let's filter. Let's grab all the rest of the vertices. So the ones that have their Z coordinate larger than 9. Let's go under math operators and choose larger than operator. And let's connect Z values to A input and the number slider to B input. I'm going to make a copy of co-pattern in custom preview components. I'm going to change the swatch color first. And then reconnect larger than output to the co-pattern input. So we have divided mesh vertices into two parts at Z value 9. But I would also like to extract the middle part, a subset of the red part within given Z bounds. I advise you to pause the video and think through the steps before proceeding. To extract the middle part, we need to introduce one more Z value limit. So let's go again under math operators and choose smaller than component. Let's connect Z values to A input. I'm going to copy the slider to the B input. And now let's define the second number. We want to extract points that are higher than 9. Z value is higher than 9, but lower than 15. To combine Boolean results from two conditional operators, 
in this instance we're going to use gate and logical operator let's connect larger than to a input and smaller than to b input and as usual i'm going to grab a panel to read the output let's again make a copy of code pattern and custom preview components change color swatch and then reconnect gate and output to the code pattern the middle section of green vertices is now visible in Rhino Preview, but the definition does not work exactly the way I want it to. Let's choose to preview selected geometry only and investigate. And if I select the red group, we can see that this group still takes all the vertices that are higher than 9. And I want this group to take only the highest points so only points or vertices with a z value higher than 15. This means we need to add another condition here and go under math operators and choose larger than. Again, we're going to test z values. So let's connect the z coordinate output to a input. And for the second number, we're going to use this slider with the value 15 and of course connect the larger than output to the code pattern input for the red group again turn on the preview for the selected geometry only and uh, check if the definition works the way we planned the definition is now complete but there are some aspects regarding organization on canvas that i'd like to address and fix First, I'm going to use the rely object to control the position of some of the wires on canvas. I'm also going to organize the components, the capsules themselves a bit better. And I'm also going to group these objects to emphasize steps in the algorithm. And then I'm going to add short descriptions to these groups to make this grasshopper file easier to read and understand. So this is it. For this exercise, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next tutorial.